Walk on the cross. Come in church. Uh, let's be upstanding as we begin the service. Amen. Just begin to talk to God. Give him glory. Give him adoration. Tell him he is worthy. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the praise. God, we worship you. God, we give you glory. We say you deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You are King of Kings. Hallelujah. 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 We want to sing the hymn that says, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. So, media team, if you can project the lyrics. As the band prepares, thank you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Heir of salvation. Purchase of God. Purchase of God. 
Imagine that you Jamaliza. We are not finished. We are still in a celebratory mood. Amen. Come and celebrate Jesus with a clap. Come on, come on, come on.
But to the ones that were around him, they looked like, oh, it's over. The story is over. But I'm telling you that Sunday was coming. And he rose again. He resurrected and he gave us life. And victory is guaranteed. Who is like unto our God? Father, we worship your holy name today. We magnify your glorious name today. And you have no equal, you have no rival, yours is the name above all name. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, now and forever above all. You have no equal. You're and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory, and yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is! What a powerful name it is! My God, what a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand, 
against what a powerful name it is the name of Jim what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my God what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Come on, give him a shout of joy. Give him a shout of victory. Oh, Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Oh, he made obedience something to be looked at and obeyed even to the dead on the cross. And therefore God exalted him and he gave him the name that is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, under the earth and in heaven, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and he is risen. Father, we worship you. And we bless your holy name today. You have no equal. Neither do you have a rival. You make Christianity real. The only religion that stands with historical facts of a king that came that died but rose again and is coming back again so we love you we adore you we worship you we marvel at you put those hands together and worship and adore the king of kings and the lord of lords amen and amen and that is what easter is all about we celebrate a recent king amen Amen, amen. You can take your seats as you appreciate our lovely worship team. Thank you so much for helping us to remember that he has no rival and he has no equal. And now and forever eternal is kingdom reign. The kingdom we see now and even the one to come. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say happy Easter. Okay, they, they don't look like they are convinced. Tell them he's risen. It is Jesus. Amen and amen. We bless the name of the Lord that it is a historical fact that Christ came, he died. There are facts to that event and that makes Christianity the most unique religion in the whole world, the greatest story ever told. I welcome you in a very special way to Sitam Parklands. This very special Easter weekend at Sitam Parklands, 2022, the year of our Lord. And I want to see those who are worshiping with us for the very first time. You heard there is a Easter production. There's something going on down at Parklands. We had our all experience from Friday and you chose to come and worship with us or you came with a family I want to see you and appreciate you I'll not be asking you to join me in front checking thank you oh lovely thank you my sister you are welcome to sit on parklands checking upstairs anyone yes come on keep standing stand up uh, I want the lovely ladies in red to see you thank you quite a number we appreciate you oh look at that you are amazing. You are our guest. We exist for you. We love guests in our midst and we welcome you in a very special way. The lady in red coming just right where you are. I hope she can see you. We'll give you a pronchua. And also downstairs, the lovely lady in blue will give you pronchua details of who we are as Sitam. And at the tail end of this service, there will be a reception for you. It is possible you're here because you came indeed to experience Easter with us. But it's also possible that you're here because you have just been thinking how how about I check out Parklands and make it our home church? Church, what do we tell them? I pray that indeed that becomes your reality as you come even closer just for warmer fellowship. This point in time, as we look back at the wonder of the cross and celebrate the Lord for what he did, we just want to give him a token to say, Lord, thank you. We want to give our substance, our, 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 our love offering, our tithes, any special thing that you're giving to the Lord as we remember him on this Easter weekend. And so we will be just doing that beyond standby. Also, our ushers will be ready to take hard cash, but our media team will be giving us channels through which we can give. So at this point, I'll just make a quick prayer and then we go ahead and give to the Lord. Precious Lord, eternal one, we thank you that you gave the very best. We cannot outgive you, but today we give just a token to say thank you. May this be used to further your kingdom, and we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Media team.
welcome to Satan Parklands, where we are friends of Asia. You can honor the Lord with your tithes or offerings through Empesa Payable number 933942. That is 933942. For those who wish to swipe their bank cards, kindly see any of our ashes. Members are encouraged to register for National Gem Retreat, scheduled to take place on 23rd of this month. For more information, kindly visit the registration desk after the service. From the Sedum Parklands Media Desk, we wish you a pleasant and blessed week ahead. God bless you. My name is Louise. I'm a mother of two girls. One is 22, the other one is 16. Sharon is the one who is 22 and Jem is 16. My name is Caroline Bourguet. I have my mother of three girls, namely Ruth Bourguet, 22 years, Abigail, 19 years, and Joy Bourguet, 16 years. Now, being a mother of girls, mentorship is inevitable. The scripture says in Titus 3 verse 2 that uh, older women should teach younger women. So we have to mentor girls. My name is Jacqueline and I'm a daughter and a product of mentorship. I believe that every young lady should go through mentorship uh, so that they are able to navigate through life easily. Hello, I'm Marcy. I'm a product of mentorship and I would like to encourage each and every young lady to be part of us. My name is Kezia and I too am a great product of mentorship. So there will be wonderful insights shared by our panel as we join together this weekend. So remember the date will be 23rd April from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. So come ready to learn more about mentorship and have great fellowship. See you there. You cannot afford to miss this meeting as our special emphasis will be on mother-daughter mentorship. And we are going to have three of our very own mothers and daughters who will team up in a panel to share their experiences. And thereafter, we are going to have a question and answer session. And all this will be happening at the sanctuary on the 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. See you there. At Park University, we thoroughly prepare our students for the job market by integrating theory with the requisite practical skills through online and in-person teaching. With our student population drawn from over 25 countries around the world, we have a rich cultural diversity that makes them effective global citizens. Join us to learn from our highly qualified faculty members who are industry experts in areas related to our programs such as counseling psychology, ICT, communication, theology, business studies, community development, leadership, and many more. Apply today and become part of the Park University community. Park University, where leaders are made. Thank you so much, our media team. At this point in time, we'd like to just take a few uh, needs to the Lord in prayer, even as we remember members of our congregations who've lost uh, loved ones. And we just want to stand with them by a way of praying and lifting them to the Lord. I'll be asking Elder Nick to join me up here so that he can help us to take those needs to the Lord in prayer. Church. I just want to sing a stanza here. I hear the Savior say, God's strength in the race will, child of witness, watch and pray, find in him the all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin at left a crimson stain, he washed it water as snow. Now indeed I find. Thy 
pearl and thine alone can change the leprous pearls and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin at lap a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Could I have where brother Christ to claim? I wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all. all to A crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Indeed, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for sending Jesus to come to die for our sins. For our sins, for my sin. He gave his life to save mine. What a privilege, what a privilege this morning that one could die that I may live. And this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, as we remember the risen Christ, we know for sure that our sins are forgiven. As many as have confessed their sins and surrendered to Jesus, they have no condemnation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. You gave us victory by shedding of your blood. Jesus, you paid the price. You paid the price. You served the sentence, the punishment that was due to me. And today I stand knowing that I have victory. That we have victory today because you paid it all. You paid it all to the last descent, to the last day of the sentence and gave us victory in the battle. In the battle of sickness, you gave us victory. In the battle of suffering, we have victory. Heavenly Father, we thank you because even as we face this season in this country, the season of electioneering, the season of campaigns, the season in which we have seen people die, people get injured, people's homes being torched, families breaking down because of politics. Father, we know that there is victory. If as a nation we come to you as we do this afternoon, as we come to you and plead for this nation, we know that indeed there will be victory. So we commit our nation into your hands, O Lord. And we pray that love, that love, O Lord, for our nation will not allow anybody to raise a finger, a machete against another, to raise a torch against the house, the home of a neighbor. Oh, Lord, even for our security forces, that they will not use excessive force against the citizenry. In the name of elections, we are praying, Lord, that even as the politicians hit the campaign rail, Lord, that you remind them, you remind them, you remind them that Jesus died that we may live, and there is none that has the permission to take another's life. Father, we are praying that even as we vote, the things that we have learned, especially in this assembly, about electing the right people, that we shall practice that. That we shall not be moved by nepotism, by tribalism, by sectarianism, 
or by the gift of money or promises of the same to bring into office people without the qualities, without the character, without the values that we have been taught are the values of a leader, especially a God-anointed leader. We pray that you remind us, O oh Lord, as we go to vote, that we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to seek out the values, godliness, humility in those that will be seeking our vote. Father, we are praying for the economic situation in this country. We have seen suffering in the past two and a half weeks. Indeed, for more than a month, we have seen suffering in this nation as people move from place to place looking for fuel. We have seen people suffering as they scraped the barrels looking for the last coin to buy food. Oh, Father, we pray. We pray, oh Lord, that you do something. As we have seen people raise their voices praying for rain and as they watched the animals die for lack of pasture, for lack of rain, Lord, we are praying that you do something new. Do something new in our lives. Do something new in our nation. Do something new today. Today, oh Lord, bring rain, bring pasture, bring food, bring good leadership to our nation. Father, we have seen people desperate as their family members go to hospital and they are not able to pay the bills. Others in homes because they cannot dare go to hospital because they have no money. Father, we are praying that you bring relief. We are praying that you bring healing. Bring healing, O oh Lord, because you are beaten that we may receive healing. And that promise is what we claim not only for ourselves, but for those who look up to us. For those who look up to us to petition heaven on their behalf. This is our petition, this is our plea this morning that you bring healing. Oh, Father, we know there are many that are discouraged. Heavy discouragement because they have lost their loved ones. Father, we pray that you bring solace to such families. Bring solace to such communities. Bring solace, O oh Lord, to such person. And as we remember them, we want to pray for the Maoris, O oh Lord, who are members of this assembly. Father, we pray that you give them strength. We pray that you give them peace. We pray, O oh Lord, that their faith and trust and confidence in you will not be shaken by this incident. Are they departure, the death of your daughter Gadoni. Oh, Father, we pray that you bring peace to that home, to the siblings, to her friends, oh Lord, whom we have watched break down when remember the moments they spent with her. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord of mercy and grace, may you multiply your grace to that family. And even as the service is held this afternoon, we pray, O oh Lord, that you encourage those that will be coming. You encourage those who will be wondering who is saved from this death. We pray, O oh Lord, that you bring hope to many who have got children, parents, friends who are unwell, that there is life in Christ, that even in death there is life in Christ. Hidden right there under the blood of Jesus, there is life. We remember the karaoke, O oh Lord, at the loss of your mother, Jimmy's mother. Father, we are praying that you give them peace, that you encourage them, O oh Lord, as they hold meetings and make preparations for the internment of the remains of your mother. That alone they will not be overwhelmed or overcome by grief, but there will be strength, strength from you, O oh Lord. And for these two families, we are praying that the meetings are being held, that Lord, you speak to many. That will be an opportunity, O oh Jesus, at this Easter holiday, at this Easter time, to remind them why you came, that you came to save. You came to save, O oh Lord, from the, the desperation of what the world takes away. Mm -hmm. 
of what we lost in the garden of Eden, but was restored on the cross of Calvary. Yes, Lord. Father, may many, may many, even through these meetings, come to find that risen Christ, that risen grace that was brought, that it will save us all, that it will wash the sins that had stained our lives, that had given us hopelessness, but that there is hope in the risen Christ. And for any other in our midst who is going through similar situation, Father, we are praying that you give them peace. Yes, we are praying that you come through for them. Mm. Give them strength that they cannot even understand. Yes, Lord. Oh, Father, we pray that in encouraging them, there will be an encouragement to the others in their families who have not found someone to encourage them who are grieving like those without hope, that they'll have a word that they can give to them. And Father, we pray that you continue ministering to us in this service. Lord, that as we leave, we'll go feeling that indeed Christ is in this place. Yes, he is no longer in the tomb. He is risen. He is risen. And he's risen for us. That we may find life that we have lost. Bless your name, Lord, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Elder Nick. Amen. Indeed, may God continue to encourage the families today in the afternoon. That's uh, from 4 at Sitam Valley Road. Uh, we'll just be uh, condoling and standing with uh, the Maoris. And then tomorrow at 4, right here at Sitam Parklands, if you want to also come and connect with the karaoke's. Now, at this point in time, just appreciating the Lord. Now, there are very special people in our midst. You can see them upstairs, downstairs. Boys and girls, praise the Lord. Boys and girls, praise the Lord. Thank you so much for preaching to us last Sunday. And there is also another category. So today you just sit back and enjoy and relax as you get to see Easter unfold. And we have another special uh, group of people, uh, friends of Sitam Parklands. I won't say much. Our senior pastor will be recognizing and introducing them to us. So at this point in time, just as we get to really reimagine the story, the greatest story ever told, the victory and the foundation for our salvation, our Sitam Parklands creative ministry bring to us a play entitled Yeshua. a big voice. I can still speak without a mic. Uh, Reverend Angie, I want to bring you back on stage just before we start creative arts ministry play. Let's appreciate the Yegons, Reverend Angie and Mr. Yegon and their children. On behalf of women's ministry, now I'm not creative arts, Kidogo, I'm the WM. Uh, we want to appreciate Mr. and Mrs. Yegon. Yes, they just celebrated their anniversary. Yes. <laughs> and they are beautiful, ha oh, handsome, handsome boys. Yes, when they are little, they are still beautiful. And I want to hand over to Dr. Gatere to tell us more. Amen, amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Paris. Yes, indeed, as um, uh, Paris has said, we want to thank God for our Reverend Angie and her husband, Hezron, Yegon, and their wonderful children. Because this month of April, they celebrated their anniversary. And um, we, we used to do this before COVID. Uh, COVID stopped us, but as you can see, we <laughs> it has lost. <laughs> we are back, and we are grateful that this is their first anniversary at Sitam Parklands. 
And so we, we just have a small appreciation, but I think before we present, they need to tell us. Okay. She is pointing at the head of the family <laughs> to just tell us um, the mic is coming. Um, Mr. Hezron, uh, how long have you been married? You know, I'm a poor mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but we thank God that we have been married for eight years. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And um, how has it been, those eight years? Uh, it has been very, very good eight years, I can say. Very, very good. God has been so gracious to us um, in all the years, every step of the way. Uh, we have indeed experienced the grace of God and the favor of God, even in ministry. And we are truly grateful to God for his presence. Amen. Amen. We can see the quiver is uh, filling. Yes. yes. <laughs> Actually, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> ah, okay. So we have our acting last born. He's in an acting capacity. Yeah, so we, we really want to thank God for you and uh, for the ministry here at Parklands. And uh, we do this at Freeman Ministry on behalf of the church and um, Pastor Angie is also the one who is giving oversight to women ministry which is historical for us here and so we really want to thank God for you and uh, Pastor Angie is assigned to one of the groups we just uh, reshuffled our group and she's in a group called Hannah <laughs> and I know Hannah saw you on the actual day of the anniversary they did and so we want to add um, a cake that you can go and enjoy at home uh, with your family. Sister Jackie is. <laughs> Sister Jackie is the group leader for Hannah. And so just allow me to just speak a blessing upon you. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to honor you and exalt your holy name. We thank you, Father, for the gift of marriage. The Lord marriage was your idea. And Lord, this day we want to thank you for our Reverend Angie and her husband Ezron Ayegon and for the eight years of marriage that you have given them. We also want to thank you, Lord, that you've blessed their marriage with these wonderful boys that are here with us. And Father, we just want to pray that you continue to watch over them. You continue to build their marriage, O oh God, because your word tells us that unless you build a house, the laborers labor in vain. And Lord, we pray that as they continue to serve you, to labor for you in the vineyard, O oh God. They will continue to experience your blessings in each and every aspect of their life. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Teres. Yes. Uh, uh, Reverend Angie, uh, please don't be in a hurry after. We are coming to help you eat the cake. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, Creative Arts Ministry has this day, I'm feeling special. My special people are here. I will not say who they are. I'm excited to see them. They were the founders of this ministry, actually, and they held our hands, and here we are, some almost 10 years ago, you know, praise the Lord. So Creative Arts Ministry is ready to present an Easter play. Welcome!
Um, Creative Arts Ministry presents an Easter play entitled Yeshua. Oh no, 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 not again. Not again today. Somebody, somebody, please. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Someone help my child. You can't stand there. You can't watch me. Can't you see? Help my child. Don't stand there. Help my child, please. She has a demon. It has she's possessed. Please. Please, please. I beg you. Please, please. Help my child. Help my child. Get out of this child, you evil spirit. Please, my child. My child. No. Oh, God, please. Let go. My child, are you not praying? Please pray for my child. He's the only one I have. My child, please. I command you, evil spirit. I cast you out, you evil Get out of this girl. My child, oh no, my child. My child. God, please, my child. Pray. Aren't you not praying enough? Aren't you not the disciples? Why are you not with Jesus? My goodness, please pray for my child. Pray more, pray more. My child, oh no, there comes. Master, 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 master. Master, do I even have the strength? But master, master, please, please. Please, Master, I beg you. I beg you, Master. Please have mercy on my child. That is the only child I have, Master. Master, I evil has possessed my child, Master. She even throws herself into the fire, Master. Master, that is the only child I have. I have been pleading with his disciples. They have been praying since morning. Seems their faith is not enough. But I believe, Master, please, Master. Master, have mercy on my child. Please, Master. Worry not, child. You, faithless and corrupt. How long? I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Please. Your master is here. Tick, 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 tick. Hurry, quick. Quick, quick, quick. Master, master, please. Here, the child. Master, please. Wow. Thank you. My goodness. My child is healed. My child is healed. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Greatest in 
the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever welcomes such a child welcomes me. Go back, go back, go back. Let, let the children come to me and don't hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, if you don't receive the kingdom of God, like these children, you will never enter it. Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity, you are swayed by others because you do not pay attention to who they are. But teach the word of God in accordance with the truth. Tell us, is it rightful that we pay tax to Caesar? <laughs> Why do you try and trap me, friend? Give me a dinner. Whose face and inscription is this? Caesar. Then, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to the Lord what is the Lord's. Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or my sister if they've sinned against me? Only seven times? Not. Not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of the Lord is like a king who went out to settle his debt with his debtors. As he began, one of the men that owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Clearly. This man was not in a position to pay his debt, so he fell onto his knees, begging, Please forgive my debt, for I cannot pay it. The king had mercy and forgave his debt. But as he walked out, he found yet another servant that had owed him just a hundred silver coins. A hundred holding him by his shirt, choking him, he asked him, pay my debt, I say. His fellow servant went to his knees and said, forgive my debt, for I cannot pay. With fury, he called the prisoners and the jailers that they may come, pick him and jail him until he could pay his debt. When others had seen this, they were enraged with fury, with anger, went back to the king and told him of what had transpired. The king summoned the unfaithful servant and condemned him, saying, you faithless, you corrupt servant, should you not have forgiven your fellow servant's debt like I forgive yours? The king called the jailers that he may be tortured till he could pay his debt. Truly I tell you, brother and sister, if you don't forgive your brother or your sister from the bottom of your heart, this is how the Lord will Send them to the nearby villages so that they can buy themselves some food. No. They don't need to go. Yeah. You give them something to eat. But we 
you only have five loaves of bread and two fish, you have defeated. Bring the five loaves of bread and two fish. you've provided before please do now let the crowd sit in groups that they may share so that nothing might not go to waste. that you're full, get up and go to your home. My peace I give you. Stay here as I go over there. My heart is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Keep watching. is possible take this cup away from me <laughs> nevertheless your will be done keep watch with me for one hour. Get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch with me. Father, This bitter cup, I pray, take it from me, O oh God. Nevertheless, your will be done. Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the time has come. When the Son of Man 
is delivered into the hands of the sinner. Get up, for here my betrayer comes. Do what you've come to do, brother. Am I leading a rebellion that you come with clubs and swords to arrest me? Every day I preached in the temple court, but no one arrested me. But all this is being done that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Jesus. Oh my goodness. So Jesus was taken to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders assembled. But you saw Peter, right? He was tiptoeing this distance, right? He went and followed them at a distance so that he could see what would happen to Jesus. So the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence so that they could put Jesus to death. But, and they brought so many false witnesses. So many of them came forward. And then, finally, two came, and they said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Now, they must have been really, really shocked when they heard that. And then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. But Jesus replied, what did he say? But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One coming on the clouds of heaven. Then, then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need more, any more witnesses? Look now, you have had blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of that, they answered. They spat in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? It's so cruel. They were so harsh and cruel to Jesus. So, let's think about it. How is it in today's world? Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Repent your sins. Jesus is coming. The Lord is coming. Repent. Jesus is coming. In, in Matthew 26, 25, Peter disowns Jesus. He curses him. He denies him. And that is very common of nowadays. Are you close to God? Do you pray to him? Are you close with Jesus? Please, people of nowadays, embrace him. He is your Lord and your Savior. Jesus is coming. Repent your sins. Jesus used to do miracles back in the day, but still does miracles now. Brothers and sisters, I ask you, who needs a miracle right now? My sister, what's wrong? The demons in this child are plenty. Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, please, I beg you, lend me your healing heart. All demons in this girl, out in the name of Jesus. Out. Out. This child is healed, my daughter. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're welcome. Amen. Amen. Ah, no, 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 no. It's only the Lord's doing. Repent. Jesus is coming. Repent your sins. Where, where?
I've been standing here for quite a long while. I don't know why I wore these shoes. Will you get a matatu to go home for Easter? Wanyeri, wanyeri. Wanyeri, 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 mam. Wanyeri, wanyeri, wanyeri. Nyeri, 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 600. 600, mam. Beya Easter, 600. Nchalala nja, nchalala nja. 500, mam. 500, tuku wengi. 500, ah, what? 600, mam. 500. Sao, 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 sao. Hey, madam. Hey, madam. Hey, madam. You are trying to go get them, baby. I know. Wait. Wait. You are trying to go get them. Ah, ah, ah. You are trying to go. Wait. You are trying to go, madam. To a chai. To a chai. To dog. Fifty shillings. You are toshi. Ah, ah, ah. Fifty shillings. Wait. 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 Ah, 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 50 bob, 50 bob, madam, 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 wait, 50 bob, wait, 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 almost wanted to pay for her. But you know, it, the sad thing is, even though it has been normalized in our country, it is still corruption. Uh, and as you know, corruption is a sin. You're preaching again? Uh, in your face. What are you carrying? See, we go. We go to work. I, actually, I can't. I've actually just been fired. What do you mean you've been fired? Uh, there was an auditor coming in, and the manager had asked me to cook some of the books. But as you know, I cannot demean myself to such, so... I, I, they framed me for cooking the books and now I have just been fired. Ah, uh, Fred, you're letting me down. Just changing some numbers. Why couldn't you just do it? It's because I'm a Christian. It goes against everything I stand for. Uh, uh, even Jesus would understand. No, it's not right because Jesus still teaches us to live righteous lives. Now you live righteous and have no food to place on your table. But you know, it's still fine because just as Jesus had fed the 5,000, he will also provide for me in these times. Mm -mm. You're letting them get away with framing you. Yes, it's fine. You're not just fired, you've been framed. I can't forgive this. We should have a talk with him. No, but you know, it's okay because I have forgiven him the same way Jesus teaches us how to forgive our brothers and our sisters no. 77 times. Mm -mm. So it's okay. I have forgiven the manager. I can't forgive this. I can't forgive this. No, it's still okay. Don't you worry about it. But anyway, while we're still talking here, w won't you actually be late for work? I even forgot about it. We will talk. Prepare, Hang on. Prepare. Here you go. No, you have to learn to be kind to the children because Jesus prepare. teaches us prepare. because it is like these children, those who will inherit the kingdom of heaven. You've been fired and you're still giving. Yes. You amaze me sometimes. Anyway, won't you sing that you'll be late for work? Yeah, let, me, let me go. We will uh, catch we'll up. Talk, yeah? Yes. I'm sorry about your job. Very good, Sky. Pilate wrote 
drop on him, and they two sat together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They took a staff in his right hand, then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led, led him away to be crucified. Amen. That was, that's so two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who had passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads, saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults at him. So Jesus set an amazing example standing in front of his enemies. He was quiet. He was calm. How many of us here would have been quiet and calm the way he was when people who are against us would have hurled insults at us, right? You would have done that? <laughs> okay, so we have to we have to be kind to others even though they hurt us, like Jesus did. He was quiet and calm and he surrendered his life. So looking back at Jesus' story, how does it affect us? How do we change from it? Eh, okay. Yes. Ah, we should get an extender in this house. I cannot cook without Wi-Fi. Yes, today is pancake day, and my kids. Ah, we'll finish this later. Let us see. <sighs> I should buy this. Buy it's expensive. Ah, Josh will pay for it. Ah, I said finish. Okay. guys are home! Yee! How are you? How are you? How are you? How's your day? How's your day? Good. <gasps> pancakes! Oh, yes. I am very much making pancakes for you guys. So, how about you guys go change from your uniform? And I bring for you pancakes, alright? Alright? Okay. So, you make sure you change. I'm seeing you. You, you change. You change. Okay. So tired. I can't wait to see Mama Kari and the kids. Okay. Is that how you greet your father? Huh? Anyway, how are you? Good. You're good, Kara. Good. Good. And you, Karis, how are you? Hmm, you haven't changed. Are you back from school? How was school? Good. School was good. And for you? Bad. Ah, don't worry. Let me tell you. Eh? You should work hard in school, and when you grow up, you'll get a good job that gives you money like mine. <laughs> Have you done your homework? <laughs> no, you can't ask for goodies if you haven't done your homework. And with these excuses again, and then Monday comes, you haven't done your homework. Tuesday, the teacher calls me. Let's do this, huh? Promise me you'll do your homework by Monday. And I'll give you your sweets. Yeah. By Monday. Yeah. By when? By, uh, by when? Even before Monday. When? Before Monday. 
Paris, by the way? Money. Ah, it's my boy and my dad. Let me give you, yeah? Goodies, I have goodies for you. Question. <laughs> Why are you still here? They have given you goodies. Wi Fi. This generation valuing Wi Fi and laptops over their parents. Uh, I thought I told you kids to go change. Uh, don't touch it, don't touch it. Go, go, go change, go change quickly. Uh, ah, you're back home. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? How okay, are now. You but you're being too hard on the kids. Don't you know that? I have to. How many times this year have we gone to the dentist because mm -hmm. of teeth? Spoiling them once in a while is not a big deal. It's a big still deal. Still have milk teeth. They'll grow back. Uh, but still, it's no, fine. no, no. It's okay. Sit down. T you look okay. tired. Huh? How was how was work today? <sighs> I had a crazy day. Uh huh. I saw a hawker bribing a kanjo. Allahu. Bribing. Uh -huh. Imagine. Ah. Oh. And then Fred got fired from his job. Okay. But Fred, he's so interesting. Who would give up such a good job in a high-end company? Ooh. He refused to cook some numbers. What's even more strange? He seems okay with everything that's happening, even okay. being framed. Okay. And he's assured that his God is in control. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't stop talking about Jesus. Ah, <laughs> I should probably buy this. I mean, it just looks so funny. Are you even listening to what I'm saying? Yes, I was. You want food? I'm bringing for you. You wait. Okay, I'm coming. <sighs> Why ask if you want to listen? <laughs> ah, anyway, let me watch some news. <laughs> Tough times. Fuel crisis, food crisis. But why is Fred okay with everything that's happening? Is it because of this Jesus is always talking about? And what's so special about this Jesus? Oh. Makes me. started in the garden when woman it started when God called Adam where are you but Adam hid because he was naked it started in the garden when God made tunics of skin to cover man's nakedness it started in the garden oh he gets the money as the disciples took naps the Savior cried and sweat huge drops of blood. So I can almost see him, not as the pictured in the Jesus film, but more like a face that looks like mine. 
because that's what he was there for. I am who he was there for. See, the fruit brought sin, but in its judgment it came blended. Take this cup away from me. I can see him coming out to find his disciples asleep. Can't judge them because I've been sleeping and I should have been praying. I see him pouring his heart out to the Father as his blood would be poured for the salvation of men. The betrayer walks in. The company of chief priests and rabbi with soldiers armed to the teeth. And with a kiss, he is handed over and like a lamb to the slaughter, he walks on without a word. So they take him to the temple, to his father's house, and they hurl insults at him, and they spit on him, and they strike him with their fists, and they accuse him. As they accuse him, they accuse themselves. As they call him blasphemers, they condemn their own blasphemy, as they have taken God's place as judge over who is fit for him and who isn't. As they don him in purple. They declare the very kingship they condemned him for. He equates himself to God, they say, but he is God and he doesn't say. Caiaphas sent them to Pilate. Pilate to Herod and back to Pilate. Pilate finds no fault in him because he's no liar, no inciter, no blasphemer, no rioter. Upright as a pole is he, blameless in the eyes of God and man like a sheep without blemish, the perfect sacrificial lamb. But still they will live for his blood. So they take him up Calvary, and they strip him, and they cast lots for his garment, and they nail him to the cross. Like the serpent in the time of Moses, they lift him up for all to see that all who look to him may be saved all who look to him may be healed. He is the king of the Jews. He equates himself to God, they say. He is God, but he doesn't say. And after a while, he who fed the 4,000 and the 5,000 repeats the six words he told the Samaritan woman, give me a drink, I thirst. But vinegar they give him for a drink and a sash of thorns for a crown and with a spear to his side oh with a cleansing blow and with his last breath he muttered it is finished and at that that's all that mattered so that's how it ended for sin Son of God, naked, lifted up for all to see this is how it ended with sinful man clothed in righteousness. This is how it ended. With the Son of God crying, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabakthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, he was forsaken that you and I may be found, found in the Father's embrace made one with him, one in him. This is how it ended. The son of man, naked, lifted for all to see. This is how it ended. It's sinful man clothed in righteousness. But this is how it started. Adam, where are you? This is how it started. Adam, where are you? That may as well be my name. That may as well be your name. Joseph, where are you? Andy, where are you? Gabriel, where are you? See, he is calling to you. He's longing for you. He wants you. He's calling you. Will you answer? Josh. Where are you? Josh, where are you? Josh, 
Where are you? You're good. Baba, you're good, yeah? I am. Oh, and yeah. then, do you want breakfast? No. no Are you sure? Sure, I think I'll just take it later. Oh, yeah. oh, let's go. Your dad has issues. Me, I don't know them. Was it God speaking to me? Don't understand what has just happened. It's this thing Fred keeps talking about. Boy, I need to talk to him. Hello, Fred. Good morning. I hope you're well. Yeah, I'm also well. I'm also well. Now, uh, you remember what we were talking about yesterday? I can't seem to get it out of my mind. Do you think we can talk about it? Yeah, I'm free right now. If you don't mind, uh, can you come to my house? Okay, I'll send you the pin. 30 minutes, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. How are you, Josh? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. wow, you have such a lovely home. Thank you, thank you. Ah. You can have a seat. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on such a ah, Any time. Let me bring the tea. Ah, no, no, it's okay. fine. I actually had something before I came. Why don't you sit down and let's have that chat? Tell me more about that story. Um, yes, of course. Um, I think yesterday I had left it where I had told you about how Jesus had been feeding the 5,000. And not only that, how he had been healing the sick and how he had been healing the lame and how he taught of these truths and parables. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, but the story doesn't end there because later on, Jesus comes to suffer because of our sins. See, he came on this earth because of you and me in order that we may be able to receive the salvation. However, he suffered. You know what? It's better if I read it for you from the Bible. Yeah, please do, please. And so when we look at Matthew 27, mm -hmm. verse 29, when, when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him and led him away to be crucified. And so in this way, we can be able to see how Jesus deeply suffered for our sins. He was even tortured after being falsely accused by the Jews. And he was crucified and where he died. But that's not where the story ends because the important part is that Jesus rose again after three days and because he lives we can be able to receive salvation amen and that is why since we believe that jesus has risen again we know that our sins have been forgiven you know it's even better i have the entire story on my phone why don't i just show it to you oh so i can connect this to my tv oh yes it's actually on youtube on youtube eh? yes 
that's even me too because I don't have the cable for that phone. Ah, fine. Ah, but my TV is smart. Which is yes, you can ah, just watch it real quickly. So what's it called? It's this one. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priest all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people... His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Yes, and so as you have seen, these are the trials that Jesus faced, even up to how he resurrected and how he has died for our sins and the sacrifice that he made for us. So what must I do to get saved? It's actually simple. I can lead you in a prayer for you to be able to be saved. Yes. So why don't you follow me in this prayer? You can just kneel. You can take my hand. And so let's believe and pray. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, Dear Lord I know that I am a sinner. I know that I am a sinner. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. And right now I turn from my sins. And right now I turn from my sins. And open the door of my heart and life. And open the door of my heart and life. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. And welcome you into my life. And welcome you into my life. Amen. And see, Josh, just like that, you have been able to receive Jesus Christ in your life. That way, you can be able to go to heaven together when the day comes. I've been saved? Yes. Just like that? Just like that. It is really actually quite simple. Neat. 
Yes. A sinner like me. Yes. Saved. Yes, because yes. Jesus actually came for sinners like you and me. That's so interesting. Yes, it is. In fact, it actually calls for celebration. Yeah, we should celebrate. Yes, we should. Mama Kara, Mama Kara, come eh. hear this good news. Ah. That you have been saved. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, this is Fred, by the way. Yeah? Yes, yes, hi, how are you? I'm yeah. Mama Kara. Ah. Yeah. He's yeah. the one I was talking to you about yesterday. Oh. So I've just called him. We've uh -huh. been talking. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, He's shared the good news okay. of Jesus Christ with me. Yes. Amen. And now I'm saved. I'm born again. And I can say that the Lord is my God. You're saved. Yeah, I'm saved. <laughs> you know what? I'll just explain this to you later. Okay. For now, let us just celebrate. Yes. All right. All right. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. There by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day At the cross At the cross, at the cross Where I first saw the light And the burdens of my heart rolled away And now I am happy all the day. Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate the Creative Arts Ministry as they leave. Thank you so much. You've been awesome. Thank you so much. Let's continue appreciating them as we welcome our senior pastor. Thank you so much, Creative Arts Ministry, as we welcome Reverend Gordon Odira to give us the sermon of the day. Amen. The story. And there is the Easter story. What would that, looking through how that is freshly reworked, to have a bearing in our lives? John 18, as we close, John 18, John chapter 18, from verses 33, uh, John 18, from verses 33, and this, this word it says, John 18, from verse 33, Pilate then went back inside the palace summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? 34. Is that your own idea? Jesus asked, Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? What did Pilate reply? It was your people and your chief priest who handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am. In saying I am. In what? In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this, I came into the world to testify to the truth. And everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Then Pilate said, what is truth? But he didn't wait for the answer. Amen. As we think of the Easter story has been told by our creative arts ministry. We've seen how it has its bearing. 
be it the times of Easter, people going to celebrate, merrymaking and having all different kinds of stuff. But what would that mean in a very great way? In this last episode, the story begins on a Thursday evening by what we saw here when Jesus goes to pray. And then in the garden, it leads to his arrested. And the story spills over to Friday morning. It is about the day of the Passover and they want to finish with that business so that the Jews who had come to Jerusalem would celebrate the Passover as a great calendar in their history. On Friday, we touched one point, but today, just to summarize and say it, in the scene two, the scene one, they present Jesus to Pilate, and uh, Pilate talks to them, and then they ask Pilate to execute Jesus, because by the Roman authority, that was like taking somebody to kill him, and they didn't have that authority within the Jewish religious practice, that could only be done by the government to author such. And at the end of it, in sin two, Jesus summons Pilate, Jesus, I mean Pilate summons Jesus into the chamber and asks Jesus the question we started by saying, are you a king? This is a picture of Pilate representing Rome, the Roman government, as it were then, Rome is the superpower. Latin is the lingua franca. Rome is leading, the, is, is ruling the world. And as they, as they used to say, all roads are leading to Rome. And if you go to Rome, you do as the Romans, they say. Rome is the thing in the entire world. And the chief supreme authority is Caesar. So at the final battle, we get the three greatest claiming authority over the world. Rome, represented by Caesar, and in this year, by Pilate, and the Jesus representing the kingdom of God. And these two governments are questioning two things. One is whether you are the king, and the next thing is truth. So he's saying, are you the king? Now, Jesus is aware that if he says that he's the king, that means he's challenging Caesar as the king of the world. He's challenging us whether he's the king of the world. And he's aware that it would amount to treason, and that would put him in jail. And in fact, that would mean even him being hung because of claiming to be king. That means it is a political battle in a sense. And Jesus is not shying away from that, that means sometimes we've taken just Jesus to be this person who just takes over sin from us. That is just one side of the coin. It's not only taking sin from us, but Jesus claims he is the ruler of the world. Of the world. He's saying, are you the king? And Pilate is asking when he knows he's re representing Roman government. And Caesar is the, world, is the king. Jesus said, yes, you have said I'm the king. In fact, you get it right. And for that very reason, I was born. Jesus is the king. He is claiming a political, he is making a political claim over the creation that he is the king and challenging authority of Caesar and that of Rome in the entire world on who really is in charge. It was not a religious, okay, it's not a religious question. It was a political and a governance question. Who is king? Is it what Caesar is, what Pilate is saying about Caesar, or it is what Jesus is representing about the kingdom of the world? Either of them is going to be true. Either Caesar is king or Jesus is king. But Jesus said he is the king. And that brings authority to us. 
that our Christian faith is not simply a proclamation of another religion. And that is why when Jesus did come, he only preached one message in the four gospel. The kingdom of God has come. The government of God has come. The rulership of God has come. Because he claimed to be the king. Because he created the world. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was there was nothing without him that was made and everything that was is because of him. Because of him. He is his right. He brought it into being. So he's not claiming. One of the failures of Christianity is we presented Christianity as a fire insurance of taking people to heaven. As if God has been defeated in the world he created. He came to rescue it from every corrupt and other thing. And Jesus is claiming he is the king of the world. How does this impact your life on Easter? Do you portray him as king? Because if we fail to portray Jesus as king, other people would come to occupy that space. And as they say, nature abhors vacuum. If Jesus is not presented as king over everything else, another thing will rise to claim that dominion in the place of Jesus. But Jesus said, when he resurrected, you have been told, all power and authority, whether on earth or in heaven, has been given to. All means all has been given. It is because of that, that therefore you go into the all world to make disciples because all power in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus because of that that is why we go so he is king so we celebrate the recent king the king of the world the king of creation we are therefore called upon you and I to go outside there and live as obedient and faithful servants of the king proclaiming to the onlooking world that Jesus is king and to the powers and the authorities that be that they are not in charge but God is in charge that Jesus is in charge it is this great thinker of Europe who says Abraham Kuyper there is no entire universe of which Christ the sovereign Lord does not say this belongs to me this is mine. That belongs to me. This is mine. He looks at politics now. He said, that belongs to me. It is mine. Because he said, for that reason, he was born. He is king. And that is why they sang when he was born. Joy to the world. Let the earth receive his king. He will rule the world with the truth and grace. He came as king and is dying as king, proclaiming he is king. May this give us the impetus and the grace to go outside and declare to anything else, any authority, any power, any ruler, any principality, Anything that seems to think they are in charge, to tell them they get it all wrong. There is one king, one lord, one savior, one creator, and that is Jesus the Christ. That is the message of Easter. Jesus claiming his authority over the creation. And then he says, for this very reason, I was born to testify to the truth. That means kingship comes with the truth because truth was on trial and has been on trial because it is the king that reigns that gives the truth of how his sovereignty of the place he reigns should look like and should control now the politics is going around they are giving us manifesto they are giving us how the truth is how they want Kenya to look to look like and how it should be, go be governed and they are seeking for pa power to govern Kenya and to give their ideologies and manifesto to rule over it. 
Because the world is ruled by ideologies. And it's either Marxism, it's either democracy, it's either economic rationalism, it's anything that is there. But Jesus is saying he's not only a king, but he's a king who came to testify to the truth. Because his kingship presents the truth. And this not only calls us to the kingship of Jesus, but to be ambassadors of the truth of the king. And that is why God is the truth, the source of all truth, and that which gives unity to truth. He is the truth. And that is why Jesus says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. He is the truth. A Christian thinker yesteryear said, a good Christian is the one who carries a gazette or a book on one hand and the Bible on one hand. The Bible becomes the filter through which everything else is passed through so that the truth of the king would reign over his kingdom. And those were the two last things that led the final battle of the two greatest powers of the world, Roman Empire and the kingdom of God, who is the king and what is truth. And that led him to death on the cross. You and I have therefore been called into this kingdom to claim, his, uh, claim him as king and two, to present his truth against the falsehood of our time and of our day. Are you ready for that? That is what Easter is all about. The kingship of Jesus and the truth of his kingdom. So that when you go outside there, that is what we need to do. And so we need to say, He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The message of Easter therefore calls Christians to rise to the occasion that we are not providing fire insurance to evacuate us from the planet Earth, but we are here to claim the kingship of Jesus who died and said he is the king and he died for the truth to be ambassadors of the same, to go into the public square and tell the powers and the forces that be that there is one king, there is one Lord, there is one God, there is one Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. And to proclaim the truth of his kingdom to every spaces that he calls us into. Until then, then Jesus is not yet fully presented on who he is. May we rise to present him that way. That is the Christ of Easter. He becomes Lord and he begins to conquer and reign everywhere. And his truth must set everything else indeed. Why don't you just surrender to the Lord? Could it be that you have made him too small in our lives? Is it possible we have presented him Simply as a savior, simply as a healer, simply as a deliverer, simply as a provider. But we've neglected the path that is a king. And he went to die on the cross on the charge that he said he is a king. Hallelujah. Bless God. Why don't you surrender to him? And ask him for the grace and the courage to present him as the ruler of the world with his truth and with his liberating power so that we don't make him too small that he's unable to save 
and to reign. Father, we thank you. We honor you, our God. We thank you that you are king. We thank you that you are Lord. We thank you that you, you declare that you are a king. We confess that sometimes we presented you simply as a savior who is not a king. We've denied your power by limiting your authority as a king over the world. And Father, we are praying, we are turning around in this Easter to say, we will proclaim you as king. We'll proclaim you as honor of the universe. And we'll proclaim your truth, your perspective, your views, your scripture, what you talk about your world as the truth that the creation will be liberated from anything that twists and corrupts that truth that you gave us. And so we surrender to today. May you make us to be instruments of peace, instruments of the truth, and to proclaim it where we go. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for Easter. We bless you for the resurrection. And Father, we pray we'll have the courage and the boldness to do so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You want to give Jesus a shout of praise. Amen. I pray you'll go out to proclaim him not only as a sin forgiver, not only as a healer, not only as a helper, not only as the one who comforts, but I want you to go and proclaim him boldly as king of the world and proclaim his truth to be the truth that will set this world free from any other thing that has taken hold of this world. It is until then that Christ becomes Lord over all in all. It is until then that the world will be liberated as Roman says that the creation are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God that they may experience the truth of God the kingship of Christ and the lordship of it. And you and I are at the verge on that, being captured by the same and being told to go and make the entire creation to obey everything that he calls us to into his world. And that is God's tomorrow's world. Amen. Amen. Great, as we go home, we pray that the peace and the joy of God would be upon us that the king of Easter and of the world would be proclaimed loudly through our speech and our deed and our everything else, that Christ would permeate the entire creation and glory would be given to him. Amen. Amen. We are privileged today to have our pastor, Reverend Stanley, Dr. Stanley here with his dear wife, well, you just come and say hi to these lovely people. Amen. Come on, let us appreciate our pastor as he comes. Remember him? Do you remember him? Yes, you do. Thank you, thank you, pastor. Yeah, thank you, thank you, my pastor. Be before I am here, he was. <laughs> and before you were, God was, huh? Amen. Good afternoon, God's people. Good afternoon. Come on, sit on Vicar Town. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, sit on Vicar Town. A town is an extension of Parkland. <laughs> yeah, before I say Jumbo, and before you leave for lunch, kindly left law say Jumbo, and then senior person going to say Jumbo. I greet you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are excited to be back home, sit on Parklands. It's three years ago when we stood here during our farewell, and we confessed that by God's grace, we are not leaving this place with any debt except the debt of love. And because of that debt, we promise that we'll keep coming by to say hi, and it is then that we have found time to come and greet you and say that we still love you, we still miss this place because it was our home. 
We thank the church elders and the young professionals and a few individuals who have come from time to time to find out whether we settled well. We left for Kikuyu and briefly we found our way to Sitam Thika town and those who have come confirm that we have surely settled and settled very well. The church is active and very, uh, a very great place to be in and we are happy to be in Sitam Thika town for a, such a time as this. So we are happy to be back. We are happy to see the familiar faces and also the new faces. And for the sake of the new faces, this is Hesent Furaha. Hi. And this is Karis. Praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to be back and to see everyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, brothers and sisters. Uh, and on behalf of my family, senior pastor, we want to say thank you for giving us a second to greet God's people in this wonderful, wonderful place. And we want to thank God because of friendship and partnership in ministry to love one another. I was telling the first service that we share a few similarities with the pastor Gordon. <laughs> the first one is, is my namesake. He goes his called Stanley like me. Maybe some did not know that. But secondly also, he also has the same skin like mine. His dark is, is also dark. <laughs> so we praise God for that. But recently I realized also he lost hair like I lost my hair. <laughs> And we want to say a big thank you, senior pastor and the church leadership, because of the wonderful work you have done. Also, ministry workers, our brothers and sisters, boys and girls, men and women of God, for this wonderful work that was begun here uh, in those many years ago. And we want to thank the Lord, 1998, when this assembly began. And we want to thank God for the great work that has gone on. We want to salute you that you are still pushing on, serving the Almighty God. We are on three weeks leave, both of us, and we thought the first place to begin, as my wife has said, no other but sit on Parklands, which is our home. And we said God has been extremely very great, and the senior pastor was wondering also what the Lord was saying in terms of every month of April, because we did arrive here in April 2009, and we stayed here serving God together until, zero, until April 2019, which was 10 solid years serving God together in this wonderful assembly. And we are coming back again April 2022, three years, and we thought we need to come back home and just say, connect with the brothers and sisters and spend the entire day with the family of Seatown Parklands. Uh, because you are our brothers and sisters. So good to see all of you. We love you, the love of God. And if you get some time, please, we have a lot of pineapples and the fruit in Vika. Welcome. Let's celebrate together what the Lord has done. God bless you so greatly, Senior Pastor, and the entire ministry of Seatown Parklands. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Let us appreciate our pastor. Thank you for the good job you did here. We appreciate First time, as I said, three years, we should start preparing. <laughs> the cloud might move soon. <laughs> amen. 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 And we apologize for today because of the nature of what we had today. The service had to extend a little bit. Are we forgiven? Yeah, we ask for your indulgence because of the nature of the service. We had to extend a bit so that we end up. Amen. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And the Lord be gracious to you. Amen. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.